Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Recently I suggested to you guys 10 terrible jobs in a variety of science fiction armies. Today we're going to follow that same format and give you advice on 10 terrible fantasy army jobs. Instead of aliens and giant robots killing you, now it's most likely going to be all sorts of monsters, demons, and the undead. Yay! The Grey Warden are a faint reminder of what the once great studio known as Bioware used to be. An amazing video game developer that was caught by EA and had all of its talent and spirit sucked out of it. The Grey Warden were a faction from probably the last half-decent franchise created by Bioware, Dragon Age. In the realm of Thetis, a darkness known as the Blight threatens to overwhelm the land of the living with demons and monsters, including the terrifying Darkspawn. The Grey Wardens were an army specially formed to protect Thetis from these terrible monsters. While they were few in numbers, they had a special ability that allowed them to sense the Darkspawn, and also they had immunity from the Blight. But in order to become a Grey Warden, you had to go through a horrible process known as the Joining. This involved drinking a chalice full of Darkspawn blood with a drop of Archdemon blood and some other herbs. It was an incredibly dangerous process that oftentimes killed the recruit. And even if you did survive, you would be plagued with nightmares and voices in your head for the rest of your life. Well, that usually didn't happen for a few decades, but it would eventually happen to every one of them. That's because over the decades, every Grey Warden would slowly descend into madness. It's another price you pay for becoming a Warden, and eventually, all Grey Wardens become ghouls. Although most of these warriors chose to go underground into the hives of the Darkspawn and die in combat rather than see that happen. So, just to recap, if you don't die in your initiation, then you're most likely going to die in battle, and somehow if you're lucky enough to live long enough, you'll degenerate into madness and end up probably turning against your friends. It's a terrible job. The Men of Gondor, defenders of Middle-earth and wards of the city of Minas Tirith. Donning bright plate armor in battle and shiny long swords, they are laughably unprepared for the horrors that face them on the battlefields of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. They have neither the strength or endurance of dwarves or the speed and agility of elves. They only have a thin layer of steel separating them from certain death. But still, they are expected to defend the city to the last man. Even though it is physically impossible for a 6 foot tall man to take down a 12 foot troll or Nazgul or Oliphant, your job is to hold the line so that stronger and better men or wizards can attack your enemy's flank. You are the anvil to their hammer and that's just the way it is. If you guys are old enough to remember the first few Warcraft games, you'll know that it always took at least two footmen to defeat one orc grunt. A footman could just never take an orc on one-on-one. -on -one. Sure, he had more armor than the grunts, but beneath that armor, he was just a weak human. Humanity is not great because of some innate ability or physicality. Instead, we're just very stubborn and relatively creative when trying to survive. But when you place a sword in our hand and give us a shield, we really can't leverage that ability to innovate. And the orcs are really just the least of our troubles. Plenty of far more terrifying things arrive on Azeroth than just some green barbarians. There's the ogres, for instance, then there's the undead and their corruption, giant flying beasts like the Chimera, and of course, the terrifying Burning Legion, an army of demons that wish to devour everything in its path. Like the men of Gondor, the average footman in the Alliance just doesn't really have a chance at all. The Game of Thrones world is relatively confusing for people not familiar with it, and it's twice as confusing for people living in it. A powerful faction one day might disappear the next day and be absorbed because of a wedding gone wrong. But if there is one faction that is a sign of stability, or used to be at least, it would be the Night's Watch. This was a military order that guarded the infamous Ice Wall that separated Westeros from the terrifying northern wastelands and those monstrous White Walkers. Pledging yourself to the Night Watch meant that you gave up everything else in your life, including your possessions, titles, and family. It was a popular place for criminals seeking amnesty, bastards, and second sons who were seeking glory, and basically individuals who had no other option. Now, during times of peace and long summers, being in the Night Watch was relatively boring, and the worst thing that could happen to you would be perhaps running into a small wildling patrol. But during the long winters, things would get really, really dicey. And that's because the White Walkers were a formidable foe, and the more they killed, the more dead bodies they had to bolster their armed forces. This is another job you really want to avoid. Of course, Warhammer had to make it in this list again. 
while not necessarily as terrible as joining the Imperial Guardsmen from Warhammer 40k, being a foot soldier in the Empire of Man was also terrible. You again have the same problem that a lot of human factions have in the fantasy genre. Whether it's the Beastmen or the Skaven, the Undead or the Greenskins, man must rely on their superior firepower and technology to hold back the enemies of Sigmar. And that's if the Chaos don't overwhelm your men and turn them against you. And not only did the average footman have to fight against these hordes of terrifying monsters, they also had to fight the corruption that they brought with them that literally began decaying and changing the land around them. Again, being humans in a fantasy world is very difficult. Witchers were an elite class of warrior monks that defended the people of Temeria from all sorts of monsters and demons. Well, more so, they say. In reality, most people saw them as creepy mutants and didn't really like them being around. And that was because in order to become a witcher, you had to go through a very, very painful ritual that was in a way similar to what the Grey Wardens had to go through. Except for witchers, they underwent this transformation at a very young age, and it included introducing several different chemicals and mutagens to their body. As a result, a newly born witcher will be stronger, faster, and more resilient. They also become sterile, and their pupils become slits, kind of like a cat, which really makes it hard for an individual to blend in. Like many of the jobs on this list, becoming a witcher requires a great amount of sacrifice, a great amount a danger and very little reward for your sacrifice. The Men of Dale stuck out quite a lot at the Battle of Five Armies, primarily because they weren't much of an army or militia. They were just local townspeople armed with pitchforks who all of a sudden found a giant horde of orcs outside their city gates. Dale at one point in time had been a very rich town thanks to all the commerce, traffic, and trade from the nearby Dwarf Kingdom. But ever since Smog arrived, real estate prices dropped, along with all that prosperity. The only individuals of note fighting for the Men of Dale was an archer named Bard. He ultimately was able to pierce Smog in a small gap in his armor and kill the beast, but not before the dragon had laid waste to their city. If you are going to die fighting monsters, you might as well fight in a force that is at least a bit prepared. Did you know that the ancient Chinese actually built the Great Wall of China to stop a terrifying alien race known as the Tao Te? The Tao Te came in many different forms and were connected with hive mind. They mainly walked on four legs, had giant teeth, and loved killing everything in their path, including their own if necessary. They were far stronger than your average human, which is why fighting behind defenses is the only way you can really survive their onslaughts. Although that didn't even guarantee you would survive a battle. The Nameless Order was created to guard the Great Wall from the Tao Te invasion. Luckily, they only attacked every 60 years or so, but when they did, they caused a lot of problems. The defenders of the Wall were called the Nameless because they were willing to make the ultimate sacrifice, and most of them eventually would have to do so. They are broken up further into five classes. Bear, Crane, Eagle, Tiger, and Deer. Bear troops were melee, the Eagle troops were archers, the Tigers used siege weapons, and the Deer troops were cavalry. But the most dangerous job was naturally reserved for the women, the crane troops. They were attached to the ropes and jumped off the wall to stab at the horbs of Tao Te gathering at the base. Not only did this seem pointless, they also suffered extremely high casualty rates, and when they did die, it was usually in a very gruesome way. In ancient Egyptian times, an elite special forces unit known as the Magi guarded the Egyptian royal family. But when the high priest Imhotep used the Book of Dead to revive his lover and defile himself, they took on a new purpose. Now is their job to guard the priest's tomb and make sure that he would never rise once again and terrorize the entire world. And so throughout the centuries, they devoted their lives to keeping Imhotep dead. Although their devotion to this one single cause is very admirable, they were pretty ill-suited to actually fight undead warriors. It was also a terrible job because it required individuals to hang out in the desert for extended periods of time with basically nothing to do. They're a much better long-term generational occupation. Harry Potter might have defeated Voldemort on more than one occasion, but he had a healthy amount of plot armor surrounding him along with some good old-fashioned love. But just because Harry Potter was good at fighting Death Eaters didn't mean everyone else in Dumbledore's army was capable. In reality, they were just a bunch of children who were armed with a few parlor tricks and mild dueling spells. They weren't really an army, and after Dumbledore died, they didn't really have much of a leader either. And the individuals they were facing, the Death Eaters, apparently ate death and were also very skilled in the Dark Arts and unforgivable curses. If you are going to lead people into combat, you're not going to give your people rubber bullets when the enemy have real bullets. Harry Potter, at the least, should be teaching the kiddies in Dumbledore's army the good old-fashioned Avada Kedavra curse so they can hold their own. I wonder how many times Dumbledore's army stunned someone who eventually recovered then killed one of their members. 
So there you have it guys, those are just 10 jobs I really recommend you avoid. Now obviously there are plenty of other terrible jobs in the fantasy genre, uh, so let me know in the comments section below what they are. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie, and you are the protagonist.